My name is Abby Sherwood and I am a pulmonary hypertension patient. From what I've been told, I think I was probably starting to slow down. Like as you know, two year olds, they're very energetic and they like to play and they like to run around and everything. So what probably happened was I probably started slowing down and my parents probably noticed that I was more out of breath than usual. So they took me to my doctor and he did an echo and he probably did a right heart catheterization, I don't remember. But they diagnosed me with pH, like right off the bat, like there wasn't any other thing it could have been. My mom has described how she was in the room and she said she was so mad she could spit nails. So that's probably pretty accurate, but then again, I was really young, so I don't remember. October 2018, it will be 15 years. I don't remember being healthy, so that's not one of my challenges, one of those things I hear is like these adults saying, oh yeah, I was diagnosed five years ago. So they remember being able to run around, do sports. They've been able to be healthy and live a healthy life. I don't remember that. So I don't have a great sense of loss for an old life because I don't really have an old life that I remember. Early elementary school was kind of difficult because I was on Flowland. You have to have ice packs in with your pump. So those had to be changed regularly at school and I had to go down to the office for medicine during the day. So that was kind of difficult. And then um, later on, sort of in middle school, I started Sub-Q. And for anyone that's been on Sub-Q, they know that when you start a new site, there is excruciating pain wherever it is. And even if I had a site like in my arm, I always did it in my left arm because I'm right-handed. So if I had it in my right hand, then I'd just have like really bad pain and I wouldn't be able to write in that that wouldn't work. So even if it wasn't my left arm, it would affect my ability to walk and do things. Cause you know, when you walk, you have like a bouncing motion. So we had to either like put it in a sling or if I had like the sight in my stomach, which was also a frequent spot, I would be in a wheelchair at school, which would be really difficult because I had a couple of friends that would be able to wheel me around. And that wasn't working for me because my condition started to decline. And I started, I had to be put on oxygen most of my day and I had to start taking tanks to school. So that wasn't that fun and I had to drag those around everywhere and I had to walk everywhere. It was a small school, so it wasn't that hard, but it was still fairly difficult. And um, then we went back on the um, Broviac Central line and it started to get a little better, but I was still on oxygen and that was still difficult. And then I had pot shunt surgery in eighth grade so that I had under oxygenated blood going to my lower extremities and the better oxygenated blood going up here to my heart and my lungs and my brain. So, that helped me tremendously, but I missed a lot of school. And when I finally got back, I was behind on a bunch of things. We used to do this thing called um, accelerated reading or AR, where we had to read books, take tests on them, and then we'd get points. And I was like dreadfully behind on that. And my teacher was just like, okay, well, it's understandable why you missed that. We're, we're just gonna excuse you. And um, while I was recovering at home, we had my friends and their families sign up on the sheet and they would bring me like food. They would bring meals. So my mom could just put those on plates and we could all eat those instead of her having to like make stuff so she could take care of me. That was great because it just made me feel good that my classmates cared about me. And then I had to leave those people whom I had known for, some of them for those nine years that I'd been there. And I went to this gigantic high school where I knew nobody and I had to get this thing called a 504 plan where I can leave classes early, if I need to, I can get an extra set of books, take those home. I only really used it to leave class early. And um, I always had to worry, <laughs> I still have to worry about this. I'll explain it to my teachers that I need to leave class early from. I'm like, hey, I've got this thing, I gotta leave early. And I don't have to ex like explain it every day. But then I'll get there and like I'll have a sub and I'll be like, oh, great. And I'll have to explain that to them. And they're always usually very good about it. And they'll be like, oh, okay, yeah, sure, go. It gets better, honestly because sometimes you're gonna struggle with it. You're gonna be like, oh, this I'm sick. I can't do a lot of things, this kind of sucks. Because like for me, I was a cheerleader. And when I started sub-Q and my condition started declining, I couldn't do that anymore. I was being really upset about it, but then I realized I could be like a secondary coach. So I could like hang out with the cheerleaders and do some of the dances, teach some of them the moves. And I could be there, but I just couldn't like be up on stage doing all the moves. But I could help with these kids if that's what made me really happy. It's gonna suck at times, but it does get better. And do what you can. Like, let's say you like soccer, or you can, or sports or something active. You can find new things that you like. 
For me, that's like reading and writing. I can sit and do something calm. You have to find stuff that will fit your illness and stuff that you can actually do without overdoing it because I think that's part of my problem. I'll do something and I'll be like, oh yeah, I'm fine, it's, it's whatever, it's cool. And then later in that day, I'll be like, yeah, I'm exhausted. So don't overdo it, learn your body, know when you're doing too much for yourself. And as you get older and you might go into high school and you're gonna meet maybe some mean people, they're making fun of something you can't control. And that's really low for people. That's not something anyone should be doing. Try not to let it bug you. And just what my mom says is you have to grow duck feathers. And water can represent uh, mean comments from people or things in your life that are coming at you, trying to bring you down. Just let it, just get duck feathers, just let it roll off. My name is Abby Sherwood and I am aware that I'm rare. <laughs>